In terms of neonatal jaundice, uh, it's a very common problem. It's an important factor in determining the timing of discharge as well as the timing of the first follow-up and further follow-up. Early discharge has been shown to increase the risk of carnitris and in the early 2000s in US when the insurance mandates caused early discharges without a proper follow-up plan, an increase in brain damage due to the jaundice happened. So subsequently, the American Academy produced guidelines and all over the world we are following similar guidelines. So each unit should have clear-cut guidelines and plan to ensure the best practice. Obviously, we are testing more babies. We may be treating more babies, but the most important motto here is to prevent brain injury, which is preventable, because in the current age, we cannot accept any brain injury. We should identify if the baby has risk factors for jaundice, which may mean RH negative mother or mother is O positive with AB or AB baby. This is called the ABO setting. Not all babies with the ABO setting have a risk of jaundice. If you have a previous pregnancy where similar blood group setting was there and the baby didn't get jaundice, it's more reassuring because it's related to the mother's secretor status. And uh, the positive direct antibody test, if uh, one of these two conditions are there, it could be positive, but it could also be positive because the mother received anti-D uh, during pregnancy, that will be weakly positive in this situation. This is not a risk factor for jaundice. If it is due to rare blood group incompatibilities, it is a risk factor and we have to take it seriously. Uh, bruising or cephalomatoma, where there is a blood collection on the scalp, uh, increase the risk of jaundice. The babies who are born less than 39 weeks, even though they are term above 37 weeks, they have a higher risk of jaundice because the liver is not fully mature. And premature babies, of course, are at higher risk. And uh, if the baby has risk factors for early onset sepsis, there may be a risk of jaundice increasing. Some race uh, factors also are there. Chinese babies may be having a higher risk of jaundice. Primary gravida mothers, due to the risk of feeding difficulties, may have more jaundice. If you are formula feeding the baby, there is a lower risk, but that is absolutely not a reason to give, give formula feeding. Breastfeeding is the best in all situations. So if the jaundice does come into the treatment zone, you will decide that based on phototherapy charts and uh, age appropriate plotting of the jaundice levels is important. Usually we don't treat based on the skin test and if the jaundice comes in the higher range in the treatment zone, we recommend close monitoring and the blood test for the jaundice to confirm. So the American Academy charts I mentioned, we also have the Bhutani and Maisel's curves to guide the risk assessment and discharge planning. There is a Billy tool, which is an online tool where you can plot the bilirubin, which helps you uh, discuss the same aspects. The NICE guidelines give you gestation specific charts for preterm babies from 23 weeks onwards. It's important to remember that different hospitals may use different units. So uh, micromole, 17.1 micromoles per liter equals one milligram percent. So roughly 100 micromoles is around 5.8 milligram percent. So it's important to monitor the bilirubin, have a guideline in your unit as to when the test is done. It may depend on the risk factors and uh, all babies should have at least uh, one or two bilirubin readings recorded before discharge, depending on whether it's a vaginal delivery or a cesarean delivery. The high risk babies need closer monitoring. Encourage exclusive breastfeeding, but you may take measures to improve milk output and keep parents informed. If the baby is being discharged with jaundice, follow-up uh, timing should be based on the bilirubin level. A baby of lower gestational age, uh, early discharge, the baby on exclusive breastfeeding, especially if the mother is primary gravida, the first baby. Excessive weight loss, these babies need earlier review. You also ensure that the mother had feeding support with a lactation consultant and knows how to express and top up express milk, uh, and also how to recognize if the baby has any signs of poor feeding, so uh, early review is indicated. We should balance the risk of jaundice with the local follow-up policies. In UK, for example, the health visitors go home by day three, day to five to check the bilirubin at home. In uh, UAE, the parents have to come to the hospital with a definite follow-up within two to three days of discharge. Transcutaneous bilirubinometer is a very helpful tool to assess the risk of jaundice. It's not a definitive uh, reading, but it gives you a guide as to whether to do uh, the blood test. 
and uh, if the um, transcutaneous bilirubin is not too high you can decide the timing of the next review depending on how close to the treatment level it is so uh, when the uh, transcutaneous bilirubin or a billy check value is more than 13 milligram percent uh, when the baby comes for the follow-up we shall request a serum bilirubin to be on the safer side while under phototherapy uh, transcutaneous bilirubin check is not reliable it's going to read lower uh, even if you use a patch on the skin so if the baby was having a significant level of jaundice prior to starting it's important to repeat the serum bilirubin if it was a borderline result and clinically baby is improving you may not need to repeat but a close follow-up after this check 